Hey guys, welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. G'day. And tonight we'll be reviewing the, this um, latest film called Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Vernon. And it was done in year 2006. It's a mockumentary black comedy slasher film. Mm. Now, that fills up a whole couple of genres all in the title. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is, um, um, you'll be, we'll be starring both, uh, well, s- they're actually special um, guests. There's a um, couple of cameos. Cameo guys. Mm, yeah. um, Kane Harder, he plays two roles, not big ones, but small Little cameos. Little cameo sneakies, yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah. Um, our favourite Freddy um, Krueger character. Um, he Rob- plays a nice guy. Yes, Robert um, England? England, England, who yeah. uh, is playing a bit of a Doctor Lem- um, uh, Doctor Halloran. Yes. He, he, you know, in, in um, what was it um, Halloween? Or was it? Wasn't there a Doctor something? Yeah, Doctor Loomis. Yeah, he, he plays a lot, a lot Doctor Loomis type role. Exactly, mm. yeah. hunting the the, the bad guy down. <laughs> Like, Gee. or in other words, um, what did they use the term? Um, they called him an, um, an, uh, an Ahab. Yeah, an Ahab. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Like an, uh, yeah, maybe Dick Ahab went after the whale, that sort of mm. stuff. Yeah, well, he, he he's the uh, the guy who put his life on the line to save others around him because he has this idea and a theory and yada 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 yada. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yada. Yada. <laughs> yeah, so um, who directs it and ah, stars in it, Mike? I'm glad you asked. I, this is why I like the sort of... Actually, yeah, this is an independent, okay? Uh-huh. And, and this is the reason why I like independence. Mm-hmm. Now, it was written by uh, Scott Glossman and a David Steve. I think that's the right pronunciation. Mm-hmm. Produced by Scott Glossman. Directed by... Scott, Scott Glossman. Glossman. Catering van. No, 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 no whatever. <laughs> no. The point, point is that he's an independent guy. He's done it on a skinny budget. Mm-hmm. We don't know what the skinny budget was, okay, honestly, but mm-hmm. because people can't find figures on it. Uh-huh. But it only boxed off us at about 69000 because it had a very, very limited release. Mm. That doesn't mean it's a bad film. It just means no one knows the thing exists. Hmm, that's a shame. Um, so we're going to talk and about it. And you think it. that mm. with these cameos of and Robert making appearance yeah, Robert in this movie, uh, you think this would be on the map, this yeah. movie? And Mr. Hotter, he's in there. Mm. They had faith in the project. Yeah. And at the end of this, we'll talk about some of the reviews. Mm. And the reviews are quite favourable, but I don't think too many people know this movie exists. So... It's up Which to is, us to do the right yeah. thing. We have the right, the wrongs. You know? Yes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> this is why we're here to tell you guys about this film. So, yeah, you might, you, you're you missing something really enjoyable. Yeah, mm. exactly. Anyway, but, so who stars in it? Well, I'm glad you are. I'm not going to go through There's quite a lot of people mentioned here, and I'm not going to say they're not important, but I'm, I'm only going to mention the main ones, okay? Uh, because, it's, I mean, you don't need to know everybody. But the main one who... I'm wrapped in. Is Nathan? I think it's Basil. Uh, B a e s e l. He plays the main lead role. He plays the uh, Leslie Vernon character. He yes. is funny. He's sinister. He is believable. Hmm. He is a very good actor to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, he's um, female. Final girl, whatever. Whatever. Uh, is Angela Gothels, G O E T H A L S. She plays at Taylor Gentry. She's doing a, a documentary type video. Yeah, they're sort of. Um, yeah. She's a student. Yeah. I, I don't know, maybe a student in college who's who's studying filmmaking documentary yeah, so stuff. So she's doing this a bit of a project and she wants to review these uh, slasher type guys. Now, uh, this is a, a, a weird universe type place where these guys actually live in the community. It's not like mm. the real world. If so, if a fantasy might come in this one as well. But anyway, mm. uh, moving on. Robert England, England plays Doc Halloran. Um, 
There's a couple of, another cameo I didn't mention before. There's a little lady called Zelda Rubenstein. Plays Mrs. Collingwood. She's a librarian. Do you remember her face from any other movies? Mm. Wasn't she in Poltergeist? Wasn't the little mm. spiritualist lady who came in there when the little girl disappeared? Or don't um, you remember? Don't you, yeah, I seem yeah, to recall I that. Think, a short lady, about say mm. five foot nothing or something or other. And from what I understand, this is the last, last, last movie she makes an appearance in. So well, she was getting a bit old, yeah. Mm. Anyway, um, anyway, and moving on a tad. Uh, we obviously got down the bottom model list here, Kane Hodder. Now, Kane's been in a couple of bits of the movie, a couple of cameo, but he doesn't, he's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute, but, um, uh, but he plays two different roles. He plays a, a neighbour mm-hmm. and he plays a guy right at the end, mm-hmm. but we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Now, do you want to do an intro or do I just do the general Barton? This was actually, well, again, a homage to the slasher genre. Mm follows a journalist and her mm. crew, as we're going to talk about in a minute, uh, uh, documenting an aspiring serial killer mm. who models himself after, according to slash of film conventions. So, mm. interesting. Um, so, do you want to take it away? Yes, I will. So, it's, well, it begins like, sort of like your ordinary documentary style filming. It's got a bit of a mixture of documentary found footage style and... Cinematographic well, you know, um, type it, style yeah, footage. It, it, it's, filming. it's part of it's mo- a documentary, handheld camera, and some is uh, probably done. There's a word for it, I can't remember what it's called. Um, Cinem- where, 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 the ordinary style of filming. Yeah. Cinem- uh, the ordinary, yeah, the real style of filming. Yeah, oh. not the handheld camera sort of crap. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, so you, it, has, it mixes it. So it has two different styles of filmmaking yeah. in this. Yeah. So, in case you guys get worried that this is another. Uh, found fi- footage film, okay? Uh, nah, yeah, it's, a, it's not, but uh, it's a mixture. Yeah, it's a mm. good, it's sort of, um, um, in case some of you guys are into found footage films, then this is, it, and others may not be into it, this has got a mixture for everyone. So this has a thing for everyone in this movie. Yay. Yeah, so, okay, I'll get back to it. So now, it starts off, so it starts off with this girl um, talking about past horror slasher film, um, killers. And these slasher killers, you probably have seen the movies, and, well, in this world, they're real, like... Um, Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger—they all the exist in this this movie. Like they're all real and stuff. Yeah, and, and they're all living on your neighborhood street, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Some retired, got kids, you know, that sort of yeah, stuff. Things you know. like that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, our lady interviewer she interviews um, Leslie, who wishes to go on and proceed with becoming a slasher killer like yes. his he, idols he, oh, he's a newbie he's, he's learning the trade so to speak an apprentice if you yes. will and he's already marked down his um the um people he's gonna do the dirty deeds with where he's marked um his final girl you know survivor girl he calls it which makes sense who yeah. um who is named kelly and she works at a diner and she's well, well, she's supposed to be the final girl. Supposedly. But you soon soon, soon see that she's not, eventually. No, because Leslie Vernon's not telling her the full truth. Yes. Ah. Uh-huh. He's keeping a couple of cards playing close to his chest yes. here, so no one knew. Yeah, he then introduces her to his idol, or one of his idols, who's named... What's his name? Is it, uh, Eugene, is it? Yeah, Eugene. Sorry, um, yeah. Now, he was in something like Black Christmas or something. Yeah, a 1976 movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, So he he was actually retired. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's living in a nice little house with his wife and everything. (laughs) So so cute, like a kindly old grandfather type. Really funny. Yeah, really nice. Quite And there's some funny bits in this in in some scenes, but I won't mention them just yet because they're too funny. We want to keep some secrets. Yeah, throughout this movie, it's like um, it sort of digs deep into the slasher, you know, story or a little bit where, like, the final girl, the um, what 
stuff he's gonna he's got planned up his sleeve. Like, why do the heroes have to hide in a, inside the house to avoid the bad guy? Uh, yeah, a things like thing. that. Yeah, it's, like, it's a it's it's like it's um how do you put it? An archive to slash a horror. Right now, yeah. Um, so, well, like, you know, any of you people in an office or a, a factory or something, like that, you get you get a workflow sheet for a, for a job. Mm. It's like step one, step two, step three. You zoom like, said, well, I have to do it this way, and mm. I do it that way, and I and I, I have to swing remote control, turn the lights off, of course, that way there, and I'm going to do that this particular time. Mm. So then the people run upstairs and do something else. So he's he's playing it all. Uh, like um, a set of instructions how if step one, step two, step three, mm. and if there's a slight variable here, I'm allowing for it in my, you know, yeah, in my, you know, re- it, my stand regulations. It may there, appear you know? boring to you guys because... No, it's not, it's not boring. Uh, but some people might hear nah, might think nah, it's boring. It's, nah, being um, nah, told nah. what the bag, the um, killer has up his sleeve before it begins, but... Um, well, it gets, it's not, that's the whole point. But it gets interesting later on. But he, he, he's lying. Mm. <laughs> that's the whole point. It's a funny point. You know, oh, and we're going, I'm going to set this up here, and these other windows be locked here so they can't get out. They're going to do yeah. that. Blah, blah. And then in the end, things change because it's a setup. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway, so the, the night arrives, and he's about to prepare himself. He starts wearing the mask, the um, outfit, the stuff. He's already got the um, house organized. Like, he's, he's chopped down. Um, branches from the tree we're to looking. avoid them climbing down the tree, or yeah, no, one's, no he, one's too close to the house. Yeah. And he nailed the um, window shut to yes. avoid them open, yeah, prying some, the window Some open. of the windows, yeah. Yes. It, it, it's quite funny. If I, he said, "Won't they just break through the windows?" And he said, "Surprisingly not." They'll say, "Oh, the window is locked," and they go run to another window, mm-hmm. or you can go and check a door, and then run around mm. without breaking a window. Like, hey, okay. I'll break a window. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. So mm. people are strange, aren't they? Hmm. So, so eventually, um, Taylor, the um, journalist girl, Taylor, be- yeah. begins to have get cold feet about this whole thing, and Leslie suggests that her and her cameraman and her to leave the scene, or yeah. sorry, it appears. Well, yeah, so he starts to realise people are going to be dying. Mm-hmm. It's not pretty. Is, is he met hollering yet? Mm, yeah, um, yes, she did. It, and and how long let the cat out of the bag that he believes that he said something like that Leslie Vernon what he is not Leslie Vernon, he's actually Leslie something else. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Uh, Mancuso, who's actually a deranged mental patient. Yeah, just so you guys know, <laughs> um, Mancuso, he's. Um, I'll, I'll tell you why I found out. Let me see. <laughs> Oh yeah, here it is. Um, there's the um, how do you say how do you say that word? What like, surname? Mercuso. Mercuso. It was actually taken from Frank Mercuso Jr. was the producer of one of Friday the Thirteenth movies. Oh, lovely. So it was taken it's all from the there. Family hate, so it's all warm throughout this movie, there is a lot of things you may notice in the background, like names and and, and a few. Things. There's one part in the movie there that um, behind the journalist lady, you got two little girls in the white first communion clothes as a skipping rope. Yeah. Now that it, was taken it, out of another movie that we're all well aware of. <laughs> uh, and there's little things like that in the background happening occasionally and, and some of the other scenes have been set up to emulate these other movies. That's why it's a comedy parody slasher <laughs> thing. So it's yes. quite funny. You know, yeah. th- if you pick up on these things on the way through, all you horror nuts and mm-hmm. slasher nuts, mm-hmm. you'll really enjoy this. <laughs> yes. So anyway, right. so he, Leslie tells them that this documentary is finished and they can go on their merry way. And they switch off the camera and we're on the, in our second half of this um, pr- movie, we get right into ordinary it becomes filming an ordinary, style. Yeah, or, an ordinary movie style. Yeah, not, yes. no, uh, no handheld cameras and no journalist type stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. 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 So it's now sort of like the first, um, so the first act was mostly all found footage and and a bit of um. Well, not found footage. Uh, some it of it's found, and others uh, scenes were from a documentary. The mo- yeah. uh, it's in a demographic way, but yeah, yeah, yeah. by the second act, this one is part of it. Um, the second act, it's all similar. Yeah, yeah, Tory, no, 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 normal, no, I just tend to say normal filming. Normal yeah. filming. Yeah, I, I just, there's a word for it, I just can't remember what it is, yeah. Cinemographics. 
or ordinary. There's a French name for a cup and ounce. So we're yes. Going to so anyway, they go inside the house. They see the kids, and they find Kelly, who's our final girl, jumping up and down on one of the boys. Yeah, right. A guy likes it on a pogo stick, so she ain't no virgin. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and the <laughs> Taylor and the crew were confused and baffled. You're, you're supposed to be the virgin, uh, the virginal um, final girl. Final girl, and she she ain't no virgin. And they realize <laughs> they've been set up. Well, and they hmm. they real also realize that they're new, they're also players in this creepy game. Well, they, yeah, they realize least. that something's going on. The game has changed. Yes. It's good. Well, well, very ominous. Hey, the game has changed. Ooh, yes, yeah. but they but they remember the rules that Leslie told them, like that he can't come to the house, or and if they stay together, he won't hurt them in a group. But if they start running around like crazy, then he picks, he picks them off. He picks them off the time, which he does. He's very good at this. Yes. He, he studied well. You know, he mm. might have passed his exams. <laughs> mm. Yes. So anyway, uh, eventually they do find some of the dead bodies, which gives them a reason to panic and start rowing and start running. And, and of course, they, he picks them off one by one. And we soon find out in one of the scenes that Taylor is the final girl. She lets the, she realizes, oh crikey, I'm a virgin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. When was the last time have you checked? <laughs> well, she now she's a virgin, wouldn't she? Oh, yes. Mm. Mm, it's anyway, she just realized, oh crikey, I'm the virgin. I'm the final girl. Yes. Then she realized it was a setup. Oops. Mm, yeah, <laughs> meaning he was probably he pegged her the moment she probably approached him to do a documentary about him. Yep. Mm. He may he probably made himself available purely for that reason. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. Interesting. It is interesting. Mm. So anyway, um, some of the other kids get killed um, one by one, and eventually, some one of her crewmen gets killed in the process. Back, well, yeah, he he tries to draw him, yeah. it does it lives away, and he so, sort of sacrificed himself, sort of, huh. uh, to draw him away from the other people. And he gets killed, but the other guy, he yeah. gets a bit beaten up, doesn't yeah. he? And Doctor, yeah. um, how what's the name? How? Ha- uh, how long? How long? Yeah, makes an appearance. He fights a bit, but. Um, but somehow um, he gets knocked down or knocked out, <laughs> whatever. Well, yes, knocked down, knocked out, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And soon enough, put, ta- out, put out of the way temporarily. Soon enough, Taylor mm, yeah. is running, running, mm. and t- until she gets to the special shed that he refers to in the story that she must discover because the others would mostly get themselves killed that way. Yeah, but he, yeah, he, he, set, he set up his own death. Hmm. Or, or death scene, and and she and she knew what he had planned, and and she went through it all. Yeah, she mm-hmm. um picked up an um an axe, and he says that some of the axes and the um equipment in there have been sabotaged. Yeah, like yeah, part of it being cut through for saw, so one good solid wacko, and it'll break the the, uh, the handle off the axe and that sort mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah. Yes, roughly so. But you get one good hit. Mm, true. So eventually, she fights some um, Leslie, and eventually, um, she gets the, he gets he chases her, and he, she soon gets the upper hand by crushing his head underneath an apple press m- machine. Yes, yeah, yeah, and it looked good. Yeah, and this he's set- and he whispers, "I knew you were the one," or "I knew," it, or. Yeah. Knew, knew that you were the one or something. And yeah, he's, he's squashing his head in his apple press. You know, yeah, make, eventually... Yeah, she, get the juice out of the apple. Yeah, soon enough, his head's <laughs> crushed. She's crying and... And she sets fire to the, house, the room, the barn, yeah, whatever it is. And yeah. we then Dr. Hall- Halloran and her one of her crew um, appear behind her in one of those jump scare styles. Well, a jump scare. Well, a jump scare is a jump scare. I the, wasn't scared, folks. Yeah, I'm and brave. she's and one of the cameramen says, um, "Is he dead?" And she says, "She doesn't know. She doesn't know what he is." And Harren says, "He's just he's just a man, just a man." He's a crispy critter, maybe. Yes. Eventually, <clears throat> post credit scene, we fade. Come to that as the credits roll, we watch a man pulling uh, uh, the dead remains of Leslie um, Vernon. On the slab. Yeah, it, it is the morgue. Yes. Yeah, mortuary, whatever. And yeah. as he's um setting, getting things organised, writing down notes and stuff, um, look who rises to the occasion. Yeah. It reminds me of Jason Voorhees. You just can't keep a good man down, can you, folks? Yeah, Leslie rises <laughs> and... And then, and then 
then it fades to black there. But. And th- throughout the some <clears throat> scene, this the post credits, um, we hear the um, Psycho Killer song. You right? Yeah, Psycho. Uh, who? Who? What band was that? Uh, 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 s- 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 <sighs> psycho Killer. Run, run, run away. Um. Oh, I can't remember. You can know, it's a well known band, I can't remember them. Psycho Killers. Not to run, say. Run, ba, 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 ba. You can guess wh- which song we're talking yeah. about, you guys. <laughs> Good song, though. Yeah, it is a nice song. Uh, anyway, irrespective. But the guy, the Morgatent, you don't see very well, is Kane Hodder making his second cameo in the movie. Yeah, see, mm. he makes a short cameo at the beginning. You may not notice it really quickly, but if you have sharp eyes, you know him off by sight. Yeah, he's one of the neighbours just cl- closing the door when the journalist is going past him. Yeah, yeah and That's she's asking him, um, can I have a few questions with, to you, with you, sir? All that stuff. No. But he doesn't want to talk, so he dashes back into his house. Just sing through the snow. Do one. Oh, oh, speaking of ha- um, Kane Hodder, I just recently um, <coughs> got another cameo video uh, of him just recently. To talk- I wanted to talk to him about um, how he makes a slasher, you know, a, a slasher killer in a movie. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at doing some good advice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is what he told me. He told me to keep it believable. And you don't overact. Mm-hmm. If you don't, and I was talking to Sarah, if you look at what Kane Hodder was doing as Jason Voorhees, he wasn't doing anything really weird. He was just walking around, power posing, uh, furtive looks, yeah, just yeah, uh, a lot of non verbals, and that was creepy. And that he wasn't running around doing weird, wide, wonderful things, or he was just there and he had a presence and that's what he's trying to say. keep it simple keep it believable yeah so that's my mm. advice to you guys it comes from came in, coming from the horse's um, he's not a horse he's a very nice um, man slasher killer's <laughs> mouth okay or ex slasher killer I one should of say. the gods of slasher mil- m- movies yeah i was trying to get um i was trying to get um uh, Robert England, but England. I, England. I couldn't England. find him Whatever. couldn't find his um yeah. where I could find him anywhere. So I can't, so I had to go for Kane Hodder. No hey, nothing wrong with Kane. Yeah, he's a brilliant I man. I like him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he yes. scares the crap out of me. You know, yeah, so <laughs> throughout this movie, um, you're gonna get to see a lot of of hints of all other movies in this. Yeah, like, oh, yeah quite a few. Yeah, but yeah. we won't go into the list of movies now, will we? No, no, no. Like a bit, we can yeah, just, a um, filmography type thing. Yeah. Yeah, like in the first t- time Taylor interviews um, Bill... What's his name, the guy who... Bill e, the Eugene Bill, guy? E, e, Eugene guy and yeah, his he wife. He was out of Black Christmas um, or Yeah, they saw... The puzzle box that from Hellraiser in that was made in 1989 oh, was it can there, be seen sitting on the table. Okay, right, right. I didn't see that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you see that? Mm, I didn't pay attention because the camera keeps moving around. Okay, fast. well, okay. It's, it's only in the background. It makes but it hard to mm. see anything sometimes. So yeah, the, yeah. Oh yeah, another thing. At the beginning, Taylor is um, standing in front of the Red Rabbit pub. This is a reference to the Red Rabbit matchbox from founded by Dr. Loomis in Halloween 1978. Okay, you did a lot of uh, good research here. Yeah, there is. Uh, I went on I am I mean I am. DB and they had a lot of um, egg hunting things in there. Yeah, they do. do yeah, so yeah, some some bits are thrown in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of guesswork, but it's a little hard. Sometimes it's hard to notice it because your the cam a found footage camera does move around too yeah, much, jiggles, a bit, yeah, jiggles yeah. too much, <laughs> and you don't really pay too much attention. However, luckily for us, when we did the, when they did the college scene of them. Uh, spying on the um, college students, um, it was easy to see the um, s- the girls in their white dresses that was, yes. playing, oh, skipping, yes, yes, yes. and all that. It was very clear, and it's pretty much um, a, a, a t- you know really hitting home to um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, no, no. Yes. So anyway, that's what. So this movie is pretty much a really good one to look and at. Yeah, here's something. Uh, I'll just go through some production notes here. Hmm. I'd like to hear those. The, okay. Okay. There's a guy, Scott Wilson, who plays um, 
Eugene, stroke Billy, retired killer, slash up, you know, whatever, uh, Leslie's mentor, mm-hmm. um, he became involved in the movie mm-hmm. at the suggestion from a friend of his, Robert England. Wow. Who was already cast in the film. So mm. uh, Robert actually told him about the movie and got him involved in the movie. So, yeah. You know, nice. Oh, friends. Isn't that oh. good? Uh, yeah, interesting. But actually, just going on production uh, notes, um, the film was, uh, the f- this film was uh, done uh, in Portland, Oregon mainly, mm. uh, an outlying towns of Troutdale, Banks, St. Helens, uh, Estacada. Is that the right name? And mm. Savvy Island. Uh, some of the establishing shots were done at uh, of Glen Echo, were filled on Main Street and downtown uh, Troutdale. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that area, folks, that's where a lot of it was done. Mm. Um, so, yeah, quite interesting. Now, this f- film may, maybe, well, I think, went mainly to um, home media. Mm. I, I, I did hit, do some film festivals and that sort of thing. Limited release, but just, so don't know how good it's done on home media. Mm. I like to think it's done well. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but again, res- can't but be sure. Critical responses from different guys. Most of them have been quite positive, except for one, which they probably don't like the sort of genre. But w- every- what was that one from? Oh, uh, one stupid newspaper person. Uh, was it? Uh, the Village Choice, whoever they are, oh, the Village them. Voice, sorry, it's Village Voice, gave the film an unfavourable review stating, desperately overcompensating for the fact that most horror films are already parodies of themselves. Oh, please, please. pretentious crap. Um, I don't even get these people. Anyone who writes a fresh script is making a good movie, it's not a parody. Um... But look, yeah, I think they, this person probably doesn't, doesn't, to watch doesn't it. like these sort of movies. That's what it is. People look, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a good approval, seventy-six percent approval rating. Um, smart mockumentary, uh, gory, funny, obviously affectionate, affectionate skewering of the slasher genre. Mm. Uh, Metacritic, same sort of thing. Generally positive reviews. Um, yeah. Lady mm. from the New York Daily News called it a must for those who like thrills laced with a sense of humour. Everyone's saying it's a good movie. Yeah, except for so, that creep. <laughs> well, except for this one creep. Yeah, so majority rules, mm. six, yeah, one out of seven or whatever it is, don't didn't like it. Tough, that's their problem. Get a life. Um, I often keep wondering if when they do the reviews, they're just uh, being forced into writing. Well, the, stuff. they do the critiques. Now, look, 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 if you were a, 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 a mm. film critic, mm. And you liked, okay, um, what's, what's popular? Let's say you like biodramas mm-hmm. and um, fantasy. And they said, we want you to review a slash a horror film. Okay. And you don't like that genre. You're not going to give it a fable review, are you? Mm. Exactly right. And I think it's the case here. So, Yeah, they really it. should um, look to someone who does know what they're looking for. Well, well not, yeah. the, the not fil- to someone who... A film not, reviewer or like a music it. reviewer or whatever should have a balanced outlook, not, oh, my personal feelings. Personal feelings, take a walk. Okay? They should be across the board. They should be open-minded enough to appreciate all genres. Yeah, I think it was pretty cool. I mean, Mm. I guess when I see the trailer, it, well... Well, the trailer, um, it, it made me think it was another found footage film. Yeah. But when you look at the movie itself, it's not. It's not, it's yeah. not. It's not another Blair Witch, folks. No, no, no. no. Uh-huh. Now, 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 accolades. Now, this is good because this, this reinforces the reviews. Uh, all, all, the re- re- all these awards were done in 2006 when it was released. Now, uh, I have to go through. I don't know what some of these are. But Best European North South American Film uh, and... Uh, something also, La Grande Fantastique Award, whatever that is, at Fantasia Film Festival. It says, says category, Golden Prize, Golden Prize, whatever that is. And they won both of them. Um, Sequences Award, uh, Sequences Magazine, uh, a Jury Prize, they won that. Uh, Audience Award at Gen Art, whatever they are, Gen Art Film Festival, won. Um, mm. Carnet Joe Special Mention, uh, st- uh, st- uh, sit- Sitges Catalan International Film Festival Midnight X Stream One Audience Choice Award for Best Feature Film Toronto After Dark Film Festival Best Film One So yeah, 
it's a good movie. <laughs> yes. So, so these guys, all these guys, they won all these nice um, film festival thingies, and most of the reviews are good. So we don't know how many people have been able to see this because no one knows it exists. Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I just don't understand people why yeah. they do that. Yeah, I mean, you had a good, a, a good independent movie. I've said it before on another podcast. If you get a good independent movie maker, why don't you push them and help the long and get them exposed? You know, out there so people can actually see them. And, and they're the new guys. Mm. They're the future guys in the industry, and no one knows they exist. Mm. It's a shame. It yeah. is a shame. I get really annoyed. Mm, shame. I mean, George Lucas won't live forever. Spielberg won't live forever. And all the other guys there, you got a few new ones, James Wan, everybody, they're okay, yeah, and but some of them you have, need a few more. Yeah, and some of them have passed away not too long ago, yeah, which is, I think some, is sort of sad. And I just wish the, these guys could... The, yeah, the we need new blood. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, Literally. these guys could be the next... Um, uh, let me see. Wes Craven, for yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or... Other type of well, horror-related... But you look at guys like George singer. Romero. He started like these sort of uh, zombie apocalypse, uh, apocalypse type movies and stuff. Hmm. And everyone learnt from it and said, hey, I like that. I'm going to do my own version of it. Hmm. And he did it on a shoestring budget. And everyone else learned how to do things on a shoestring budget. Hmm. And yet, um, even Alfred Hitchcock took a note out of these guys like George Romero and some other guys doing low-budget films when he made Psycho. Yeah, so... So you think yeah. about it. Hmm. These guys are teaching... Uh, people how to suck eggs. Yeah, exactly. You know, so really, uh, these new guys, yeah, sit back and listen to them, help them along. Hmm. I mean, when uh, George Lucas made uh, American Graffiti, uh, he had Francis Ford Coppola on board to help him get his finance through because he was a new kid on the block. What happened to George Lucas after that? Needless to say, he became popular. Hmm, quite right. Um, and he didn't have any problems anymore. Hmm. Yes. So, you know, so you all independent filmmakers usually start off just the way we were years ago. Yeah. I mean, it's a hard life, but if you stick to it, and you know, yeah. you, you should get some pat on the back from someone saying, "Hey, job well done. We'll, yeah, keep, we'll, we'll help you along for your next." Yeah, film. and even if the movie is crummy, I don't think the best way of reviewing something is to review it and say how bad it was. Just try to say there's room for improvement. Exactly. Well, okay. I, I don't like bad mouthing anybody, and I'm, and, and I'm not being a troll here. Uh, oh, there's a guy who made um, mm. uh, a race ahead, uh, bug uh, uh, no, I can't remember him. <sighs> he made some other good movies. I just can't remember. I, can't, you know, I keep talking about him. I don't like a race ahead. I can't. I've seen it several times. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. But the same guy who made a race ahead as his first movie, he obviously had. Uh, some good bits in it because people believed in him and he, his next several movies after that were really good movies. Mm. And I think he did um, Elephant Man mm. and he did Mulholland Drive and things like that. He made some really good movies after yeah. it. Mm. But he did something in there. I think people believed in what he could do. They could show him as being a good director. Yes, exactly so. so. why don't... Uh, I've got a mental block. I keep talking about it. <laughs> this guy, and I just yeah, come, well, but to admit, really, so the point is, these new guys have to get a bit shot somewhere, and someone's got to take a, a leap of faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and just stop thinking negative thoughts about it. Exactly right. Yeah, because you're going to find that you're going to find that even the most what most um, missed movies, the most unseen ones, will most likely make. Yeah. Will most likely give you um, an edge. There's a lot of good movies. Look, we, 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 Sarah, more so, she goes looking for independent movies. Um, that we've seen some mighty fine independent movies out there mm. which haven't made it to the main screen yeah, purely but, because yeah. they haven't been able to get exposure through uh, a yeah. major studio yeah, I'm and still, distribution I'm platform. still talking, I'm still blown about yeah. how um, when they made, when they made, um, Never hike alone. I like their attempt yeah, that at was making not, that. Wasn't that. Bad. that wasn't bad. Yeah, they made the the um whole set. I'm pretty much blown every time I watch that movie. I yeah, know that's uh, not bad. It's, it, it was well done. Mm-hmm. But you look at those other ones we talked. Um, oh crikey, Chastity Bites. Hmm. Now that's well, that, we haven't got around to that. We haven't one done yet. that one yet, but, but we will. But in just you know, that is a really, really good independent 
It's, it's, it's still not quite a comedy. It's still a comedy horror like this, but it's really, really good. It's good. It, the storyline's great. The acting's great. Everything's great about it. And you don't see too much coming out of these people anymore because no one had any faith in them. Hmm. Why? Yeah, I don't know. It's just so sad. Yeah. Anyway, um, how do you want to rate this movie? Oh, look, I love this movie. This is one of my. This this is up the top there of all the other good. I mean, do say good. good. Uh, parody, comedy, black comedy, whatever you want to say, you know, these sorts of things. It's great. It mm. really holds its mm. own. Um, I've got to give it a nine, easily. Nine. Mm. Nine out of ten. I'm going to give it nine and a half out of ten. Ooh, so, okay. To tell you guys how I think it's very special, this movie. But, you know, I'm, I still would like to think guys like this could be inspired to do other things and they, it gets too yeah. hard they can't get funding yeah I mean the only no time the only sad. time a film yeah. will most likely be able to be funded if it's a movie that we all know and heard about often a lot like say um, a lot of those people out there at the moment are um, the only main film interest at the moment is um, all those superhero movies at the oh, moment. Oh, yeah, the Marvel. Yeah, they keep yeah, focusing yeah. on them, and they keep hiring filmmakers. Would you guys do this instead of what you want to do? Yeah. Even the whole point is to, to make some a movie to entertain not only the um, the industry, but to entertain, entertain the, 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 the director the, the and people, filmmaker. The people go to the theatre. Yeah. The people have to go there. They're going to sit through the stuff. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not knocking action hero type movies. If they're done well, good storyline, everything else, I like the special effects and everything. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. there's got to be other genres out there, mm. and there's got to be other. I mean, what happened to just a good old fashioned drama? Mm, good point. They're gone by the wayside because here's another action one. Yeah. Uh, here's another action horror. Here's another. I mean, yeah. okay, fine, but how about a good intense crime, yeah. suspense mm. thriller? Yeah, another yeah, thing yeah. is, I found out, I kind of got this message from a director one time. He told him, he said that if the film interests the director, the filmmaker, then this film is will interest the masses. Yeah, Meaning, in other that's... words, hmm. that the, if the filmmaker is ta- does take an interest in this sort of theme... He, be- he, he believes in it. Believes in it, puts yeah. the encouragement and yeah. love into it. You'll see the magic happen. Then the um, audiences will see the love yeah, and, yeah. and care and love and devotion into the film. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, a, a good director can bring an average movie home quite easily. Yeah, I think I saw, yeah. I heard this from mm. a YouTube video I I just heard not too long ago. He was saying about talking about filmmaking and and how we should um, try to enforce new things into the industry yeah, that's I what mean, I'm saying there's too many number crunches running it I, mean, I think I've said it before that, I mean the accountants and stuff run the industry more there, there should be a bit more of a creative uh, attitude towards the product yeah. I mean you can't say well that type of movie's yeah, working at the moment let's make yeah, another one just like it it gets yeah, tiring after yeah. a while I mean you, know? I, you yeah. notice right away in those new movies the ones that they're made to do the directors I should say they're being forced to do the films and they're not putting much passion and love into yeah, it. And, that, and that, they, they feel very, oh, vacuous. They're just, there's no, well, oh, the people are there, they're walking around, they're saying the lines, the scenes are okay, the costume's good, the costume's yeah. good, but there's no magic, you can't feel it. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah if I you see could, a good movie. Yeah. I like the old feel the movie. Yeah, if you yeah. can feel it and you can touch it and you can sense it, yeah. then you're there. Yeah. And, and you want to be there. And, and, that's, and the that's the, the magic of filmmaking. It's supposed to take you away from your lounge room. Like yeah. a James Bond movie. Yeah. You see, hey, he's yeah. gone to this yeah. exotic place. You say, wow, that looks good. Wow. You know, yeah, I can like, almost smell the palm trees. But, yeah, you know, like but, when yeah. if you go to a cinema, you go to a movie yeah. and you watch this movie Without even leaving a seat, without going to the toilet, then you're yeah. you're tr- you leave you're, a puddle, but that's really good. You're you're transfixed in the movie. Exactly, that's you're, what transfixed. You're yeah. in love with the movie. You're not wanting to. You don't want to miss a, a single uh, breath of yeah, what this movie is all you're, about. You're drawn into the story and the scenery and the plot and everything else, and that a lot of new movies are missing that. And I yeah. think that some some of the big major players aren't getting a good response to the box office in some of the movies they're making because they haven't got it. Mm. They haven't got it at all. They've missed it. 
Yeah, then and that's accountants um, ship cannot, accountants has sailed. So some... accounts cannot run the industry. Yeah, that They've ship has sailed. For them. <laughs> Financial controlling, fine, but let somebody who's creative have a bigger say. Not yeah. just the accountants. Yes, yeah, so that's or the financial yeah, controls so that's or about you want it to call for them. this episode. Um, thanks for listening to what to this this episode, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you guys some more next time. All right, this is Sarah Stevenson, and I'm the other one, Michael. <laughs> saying, see you guys around. Bye, guys. <laughs>